just wondered if you could tell me what kind of themes you like to invest and what is your sweet spot? Well, so the firm, we like to, we like to make big bets. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for an entrepreneur who has a somewhat radical idea um, mm -hmm. and who goes after a big market. And then within that, we are what's called stage agnostic. So we will write a check for as little as $10,000 all the way up to $100 million. So we invest at all stages. Wow. And in some cases, it's a young entrepreneur who is out of school or not even out of school who has a big idea and we feel like he's kind of he or she has the guts to pull it off. Yes. And it's a big market, yes. and we'll put some money in. Fantastic. At the venture stage, we will make a you know three to twelve million dollar investment. Someone will go on the board, and then we do a lot of growth stage investments. So I'll give you an example: um, Groupon, Skype, Zynga, Facebook, Twitter are all uh, growth stage investments that we've done. Correct. We like everything that's um, related to computer science. So we're intellectual, computer um, IP is core to the business. Okay. And within that, it is consumer tech, like a Zynga games company, yep. but it's also deep enterprise, um, like uh, some of our stealth investments that do networking or storage or cloud services. Correct. So it runs the gamut. What we don't do is clean tech or transportation or space elevators or algae or any of those things. Best to stick with what you know really, isn't That's it? That's true. <laughs> then you have success. <laughs> what, what do you look for in women entrepreneurs and startups that indicate interest to you in investing in their businesses? I think it's basically the same thing. Great. <laughs> um, it Great. is absolutely the same thing. We don't make a difference. Um, I think so, in some cases women have um, more of an act. Um, knack for design and uh, that kind of sensibility. Yeah. So that often comes out, which is nice to see. Um, I heard someone say that if a woman had designed Facebook, it would be much prettier. <laughs> it might not be ibm I'm blue. Joking. But, yeah. <laughs> I think it was a, a joke that made the rounds. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I think the the women uh, entrepreneurs that we would look for are the, the, the fit the exact same mold as the men. Great, great. So no bias there. Fantastic. Advice for pitching for venture is often correlated with dating and my background is in the online dating industry so I'm always interested in this. What sort of chemistry makes for a good match and is a success for both entrepreneur and venture capitalist? I'm not sure it is like dating and if it were like dating oh, okay. I might not be able to kiss and tell. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that there is, there, there is something to be said about the chemistry but mostly we look for success factors. You know? okay. is, is that entrepreneur uh, does she have a strong vision mm -hmm. and a, a real backbone to go after a big idea? And I think the, the the things that we get most disappointed about is when we when we think the entrepreneur doesn't have an idea that's big enough. Um, Got it. And Got it. sometimes you know you optimize for oh I could sell this to Google, Yahoo, whatever. And those are not the kinds of things that we'd like to invest in. We'd like to in, invest in men and women who have like a big idea yeah. and want to go after it. Great. Then chemistry, you know. Uh, we have a, a, a point of view that a good entrepreneur will know what she wants to do and what she wants to accomplish with the business. She will know the product and the co competitive set much better than we do. Yep. So we, we try to be super respectful of the entrepreneur and get involved when they want us to, be super, super helpful, oftentimes at a tactical level, but mm -hmm. really respect the entrepreneur's vision. And I think that ends up creating a good chemistry. Yeah. You know, entrepreneurs, you know, they are, they have a lot of pressure on them already yes. and they have a big things to accomplish. You don't want a venture capitalist who's up in your shorts all day long um, yes. telling you what to do yeah. and you know, over coaching you. Yeah. In your experience, are there many women entrepreneurs that are unsuccessful in sourcing venture with that success ingredient that you have? And because um, we already know that the percentages of women who are successful are very low. Yeah, I think the, um, I can't speak for, um, my phone is ringing, uh, mm. excuse me, um, the, the, I can't speak for other businesses, but when it comes to tech, I think there is a, there's a uniqueness to the technology business. Okay. And that is that um, the company and the product end up being very, very closely related. You know, if you look at Apple or all the big companies, the, the product and the company are almost one. Right. Now, what that says is that oftentimes the technical entrepreneur ends up being the most successful entrepreneur because mm -hmm. it is so much about the product. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we run into trouble when it comes to men and women. If you look at the engineering degrees, at least in the United States, 
the number of female en engineers that have graduated it has been small yes. and it's actually going down yes, which is a huge disappointment and mm -hmm. I think that that's why I think in tech in the tech business you have so few female entrepreneurs you know the the most successful companies are run by the technical founder okay think about you know Bill Gates in Microsoft's heyday Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs Larry yeah. Ellison Mark mm -hmm. Zuckerberg you can go on down the list mm -hmm. and there are very few women who fit that mold and I think as a result we see fewer women who get funding got it there's some great exceptions to that Diane Green who started VMware which is one of the big big software yes. franchises she created a whole new layer in yes. the stack which is admirable and she was uh, is a great engineer and you know broke that mold or the stereotype. Yes. And I think the other thing to also consider is that there are many women who are super successful in the business. When it comes to that founding, technical founding CEO spot, we see fewer women than we want. Right, okay, okay, thank you. What do you think then that women entrepreneurs and startups do could do to increase their chances in sourcing venture? Well, I think the, um, <laughs> the engineering degree would help. Um, and if you don't have an engineering degree, um, be a great product picker. Um, the ability to understand a product and how the product can fit into a market, and in particular in the enterprise place, mm -hmm. can you get, can you extract a, a purchase order or a PO yeah. from a big company yeah. with this particular product? What does it have to integrate with? How does it have to work to really get that done? Mm -hmm. I think that. There are exceptions, you know, where you might not have the technical degree, but you are exceptional at product picking, and you're also exceptional at nurturing engineers because that is just crucial to the process. Yes, right? yeah. And definitely. there are very successful women who are super, super high up and run technology companies, yes. like Cheryl Sandberg, who yes. does not have a technical yes. degree, but yes. is exceptional. Yes, yes. And I think I think the the product picking and the nurturing of engineers ends up being end up being two important components. So there'd have to be some sort of visionary element of the product picking, wouldn't there? So that um, it'd be women that could actually see the disruptive potential of a product or service. Yes. Um, yeah. So in the absence of having the technical degree, you can still know a lot about what enterprises are buying or what consumer behavior looks like. Okay. How do you, how do you make a product not just a product but yeah. fit into an overall solution with yeah. services and integration points to other products and all those kinds of things? Brilliant. Those are not fundamentally. Uh, th those are fundamental things to understand and yes. to to um, excel at that yes. may not require a technical degree. Got it. Thank you. What sort of challenges do women face if they become a venture capitalist from your experience? Um, Although you've got a great firm here. <laughs> I, you know, I have nothing to complain about, <laughs> I, I have to say. You're it's, having fun. <laughs> it's, um, I'm having a great time. That's it's, great. Um, it is a really good firm. Um, we have two, we have three partners um, here. Um, we have Shannon who runs the entire talent agency. As she has a whole bunch of people working for her. Um, mm -hmm. She's a woman. She's super successful. Um, I think the um, the again where a potential issue might arise is if you do, if you are dealing with a technical founder, you have to be able to talk to and relate to a technical founder in a way yes. that makes them respect w what else you bring to the table. If yes. it's not you know being able to talk code one on one. Yes, yes, yes. That's a bit of a challenge. Definitely. Thank you. What needs to happen for venture companies to employ more women venture capitalists? And obviously, you guys are ahead of the pack. Good. Um, we are, although you know, at Klein and Perkins, there are a number mm. of Destray and there's Eileen and um, Beth. Juliet and yeah. Beth. There are a number yeah. of partners um, yeah. who are brilliant women who are yeah. very successful in their own right. I think the thing that we look for uh, for our general partners and also our other partners is. Mm having operating experience because what sometimes okay. happens when you're talking to an entrepreneur and helping an entrepreneur make the company more valuable and build the business is just having been in the shoes of having the the pressure and the reward and the understanding yes. what it takes to build a business yes. and I think that's really really hard to fake yes. if you have a purely financial background so you might be great at the spreadsheets and uh, great at the modeling yes. but that's not how an entrepreneur lives their day-to-day -day life so having empathy and an understanding for how it works mm. and and all the sausage making that's involved mm. is super super important and, I, and so that's I know that that's something that we look for uh, with all of our partners whether they GP or others is 
have been people like not watch the movie but have really built something. Mm, that's a really good image. And um, I've been doing a series of interviews with European VCs and European mm -hmm. founders, and it appears that a lot of European VCs come from financial backgrounds, mm -hmm. and that that appears to be the, the missing piece or the missing link for women founders in Europe. So. There are new firms now mm -hmm. that are popping up that are, are similar to what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think... It's obviously a crucial piece, really. I think it's a super crucial piece because what happens when you don't have the experience of having built something, you tend to get, A, a lot more nervous when you see the problems. And, you know, every startup, every growth yeah. company, every single... Um, there's a lot of hair mm. on all of these mm. situations. So you, you can either get way more nervous or you can give extremely opinionated and strong advice that might be off just because yes. you've never actually done it. Yes. So yes. I think that is something where, you know, if you're if you're a woman entrepreneur like here and with a lot of other entrepreneurs in the valley, I think you would have a, a much better chance than if you have a purely financial background. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. What is the key from your experience to bridge the gender gap with male venture capitalists, both for women venture capitalists and women entrepreneurs? Well, the gender gap, I think um, if women are given a shot, um, I think they tend to work hard, they tend to be very yes. team focused, they tend to be pretty good communicators, they tend to be very team oriented, they tend to have a, a lot of sort of collective female burden on their shoulder. So I think once they're given a shot, they tend to do really, really well. Yes. And I think if, you know, as a group, we do really well and then we support each other. Yes, um, that's We're nice going case. to make, you know, within a generation or two generations, we're probably going to make a lot of changes. So in other words, we're already building that bridge, you think? I think we're building the bridge. It's <laughs> a huge way to go and there is still yep. a glass ceiling and whatnot. Yep. And I think sometimes women can be their own worst enemy. Yeah. You know, there's the whole biological clock, and I think yes. sometimes people, women, put their career on a, a slow or burn because yes. in anticipation of having to juggle it all and those kinds of things. So mm. I, I would say, if you're a woman, if you're smart, if you're ambitious, like go, yeah. <laughs> go for it, and don't stop because yeah. you know once you have children or the husband or both, yes. you, know, you will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's great encouragement. In the dance with an entrepreneur, both in the decision-making process of funding a startup and then in working with those startups, what are the necessary qualities that make a good venture capitalist? And some of the talents that VCs have fed back to me. Would you trust your gut instincts and feelings that happen within the relationship with the entrepreneur as signs about what's happening in the business or the startup? Or would you manage by influence or persuasion? And obviously this comes more to light when there's difficulties in the startup. Yeah, I think the uh, in the decision making process, it really depends what stage you're looking at. Okay. When you are, um, it, when we're acting as angel investors, it's a pretty quick decision, and it has a lot to do with gut because you really okay. have an entrepreneur and an idea that hopefully is connected to a big market, mm -hmm. but you don't have any traction. There are no numbers to look at, so it's very much a gut driven decision. Okay. When you're doing a growth stage investment, there's a lot of data. You know, there's right. a lot of revenue, there's a lot of how many countries, there's a lot of, you know, what yeah. does your team look like, there's yeah. a lot to look at, a lot of analyze, so it becomes a much more uh, th cerebral exercise. Got it. Now, let's just assume the decision has been made. After that, once a decision has been made, you're backing the entrepreneur. That's it. Right. So, you know, you work with the entrepreneur, find out what she wants to do, what are the challenges, what are the obstacles. You try to help that entrepreneur remove as many of the obstacles as you might find. Okay. Um, I think it always needs to come from a point of view of respect and we're in the yes. same boat. Um, yeah. uh, maybe it's because of my service business. I ran a, a, an agency for a long time, but you know, I feel like the doctrinal you shall um, tends to not work as well as okay. they, you know, here are three options. Here's how this movie could play out if we do this versus that versus the other. And it then ends up being the entrepreneur's call. Really? An entrepreneur, I think, will have a lot better time deciding and living with the decision if she gets to make it. Thanks so much. And thanks again for your time. And um, I'm sure that any entrepreneur that manages to find their way into Anderson and Howard is going to have a fantastic um, ride. Send them my way. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.